Okay, so in this lesson, what we want to do is we want to start adding some procedural textures to our wine glass and our cutlery. The table and the plate are going to have some custom, what I'm going to call custom textures on there. However, the wine glass and the cutlery are just going to have a standard sort of material setup on them. So what I've done is I've enabled everything in my outliner by... Um, it was it was hidden with Control H, but I just clicked everything and went Shift H. And what I've done is I've used my four views by here. So I've got front, side, top, and you know perspective view. And what I've done, they were actually before all of these were on the grid at the bottom. But what I've done is I've used a mixture of these different views. So I know I need to move it up by here, and then by here it looks like I need to move it back. And I zoom in. And right, this needs to come down on the table like that. Okay, so I've used a mixture of these views just to kind of lay everything out, you know, and this is the kind of setup I've got. Very basic, it's a table with, you know, these standard, um, uh, whatchamacallit, utensils. Um, anyway, what we want to do is on the cutlery, we want to apply a chrome texture, a shiny metal texture, okay? And on the glass, we want to apply funnily enough, a glass texture. Um, now, I'm gonna go through how we set each of these up. So, before we actually start applying materials, we need to add a light source in here. The reason being, if we try to render this scene now, well, there's absolutely, we haven't created any lights. It's gonna be pitch black, you're not gonna see anything. So, I'll have supplied to you a HDR, and in your sort of project setup, you need to drag and put your HDR in the Source Images folder, okay? So I'm just gonna drag mine in, it's called Lithwood Room 2K, and that's a high definition, no, it's not high, high dynamic range <laughs> image, not high definition. It is also high definition anyway. So, okay, right, let's pop out. Like I said, we need to create some lights because up here at the top, I've got this little eye icon, and this is my render view. So I'll bring it across, and it's got Arnold Render selected, make sure it has, and then if you just click Render, it's gonna come up completely black, there's nothing there, okay? Um, now what we wanna do is first of all, make sure that we come to render, come to render, and I'm just gonna make sure, yeah, perspective is chosen. Because what that means is it's gonna be rendering this view, but remember, there's no lights there. So what we need to do is we need to create a light. So I'm gonna to go to create, and lights, let's go for area light, okay? And what you'll notice is, if we zoom out, we've got this little thing by here. So let's just um, let's just scale that up just so we can see it. This is actually our light. So let's move it up like so. Let's say that the light is going to be, um, let's rotate it, um, something like that. And let's move it, let's move it back. So the point, the direction that that little, um, whatchamacallit, is, that line is, Point in. That's the direction that the area light's going to be pointing. So look, let's move up like this. So let's have a nice little view. Let's hit render now over in the Arnold, in, in the render view. It's this little clapperboard. Let's see what we've got. Well, it's still very dark. So what we need to do is click the area light and then go to your attribute editor. And okay, let's go into Arnold and down here, because that's the renderer that we're using. And let's increase the exposure, let's go five. Let's give another render on this clapperboard. And I can, I can start to see some stuff, but you probably can't. Let's go and turn the exposure up. Let's go, tell you what, 10. And let's give it another render. And we can start to see some stuff now. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna angle this a little bit more so let's get E, let's rotate it a little bit more like that. And I'm also, I'm gonna take this exposure now, let's go up to, let's go to 20, let's see how that's working for us. Click the render. Right, that's way too bright. So let's try 12, let's hit render. Okay, we're starting to get there. Now you're noticing each time I have to click this little render icon, what you can do is you can turn IPR on. See that, IPR. What that means is every time I make an adjustment, it's automatically gonna update in here. So let's click IPR. You'll notice that we've got this little stop. We can stop it now. So let's say I'll just update this from 12 to 14. It automatically updates, okay? Now that's really, really good. First of all, let's, I don't know if you can see, but that's really, really dotted by there. It's really, really noisy. And also you may be able to see there's banding in this light. Let's have a look at ones, we'll see if we turn the samples up to two. 
That may have, yeah, that has fixed it slightly. Um, basically, this is the quality, and I'll go into render settings in the future on how we can make this look better. But, you know, we're getting something that looks quite nice at the moment. Uh, what we want to do, though, is every, we've got our lights set up. Uh, we want to actually um, now apply a material to these, because they've all got what's called a Lambert. A Lambert is your standard kind of texture. The light, the area light, I'm gonna come back to that later in a future lesson where we look at lighting, but look, we've got something to look at now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my spoon. I'll tell you what, let's, let's go in as well so we've got a closer view. And this is just gonna update. So it may take a while, but yeah. What, what I'm gonna do is right click the spoon and I'm gonna go assign new material, okay? And in here, we're using the Arnold renderer. So I wanna come down to Arnold and I wanna to go to AI, standard surface, okay? And you can see the materials actually change. It's a little bit of a brighter gray now. Now in the presets, if you look here, we've got Chrome. So let's go Chrome and replace. And you'll see we've got some stuff going on. Now, um, so let's have a look first of all. Specular, that's your highlighty reflections. So what we can do is we can play around, we can turn up the roughness. You're probably not gonna see a lot now until we do one or two things though. Um, so yeah, look, this is our chrome. However, you can see by there that it's reflecting the light, okay? However, it's reflecting the table on the bottom and it's not reflecting anything on top. The reason being is if we look at our scene, let's, I'm gonna turn IPR off now so it doesn't update all the time because it's winding me up. Right, um, you can see there's nothing, it's, it's blackness apart from that one light. It's not gonna reflect anything. So what we need to do to make this look really nice is we need to add something called a sky dome. So see by here, Arnold, click there. Let's go lights and sky dome light, okay? I'm gonna move my render view away for the moment. Right, okay, so what you'll notice is if we zoom out, we've got this massive sphere. And what we wanna do with this sphere, and let's click um, Sky Dome Light, we wanna come across in the color, we wanna apply our HDRI, okay? So let's click this little um, checkerboard by here on the color, make sure Sky Dome Light is open, so just click Sky Dome Light, Attribute Editor, click this, and we are going to apply a file, okay? Now come into here, select the folder, and you wanna to come to your source images. I haven't set my pro project back up properly. <laughs> um, one sec, let me navigate to it. Um, documents, Maya, um, projects, dinner scene, source images, there we go. Right, Lithwood Room 2K HDR, okay? This is basically a high dynamic range image of a living room. Click open and you'll see it's applied it to the outside, all right? So what I wanna do now is zoom back in because now this spoon has something to reflect. So let's get my render view and let's put it there. Okay, right, let's click render now and because it'll have something to reflect. It's got this light, but also it's got HDRI. So let's give it a render and see what it does. It may take a little longer, but yeah, basically what we've got going on, we've got a lot going on we've got this spoon is now reflecting the whole environment. Um, but also we've got indirect lighting on this table. It's being lit sort of orangey because of that environment. Okay, so like I said, we can see the reflection in here now, but we can also see this HDRI slipping through in the background. We don't want that. So in the Sky Dome light, what you wanna do is scroll down to visibility. Let's have a look now. What happens if we change camera to zero? Let's give it another render. Well, what you'll notice when it decides to render in is you can't see it any, anymore. So what, what that's doing is we're saying we don't wanna see the HDRI in the camera. Where we do wanna see it is in the specular, which is why this is set to one. The specular is the reflection. Also, it's lighting the table. And I think it's lighting the table for now a little bit too much. So this diffuse, if you change this to 0.5, Another quick thing to mention is, see this icon up here, keep image? Well, I'll click this, and now if I turn my diffuse down to 0.5 and do a re-render by clicking up here, you will notice a few things. If I go back between the two, you'll notice, because we clicked this before, we've actually saved the image, so we can compare now. And yeah, I wanna change, bring it down so it doesn't spill onto the table. So I'll bring the diffuse down to about, I, I think, 
four, but also those reflections are really strong. So specular, I think I'm gonna bring down to about 0.7, okay? I'm also gonna keep my previous image and re-render because now I can compare the previous and the now, if that's, a, if that's a term. So I can scroll back and I can actually look. Yeah, okay, I think it's still a bit strong there. So I can either save an image and try again, or what happens, remember, if I turn this IPR on? Well, let's have a look. So we're gonna turn IPR on. So as we make adjustments, it'll update. So let's bring the specular down to about 0.2. Hit enter. And you know what, that's, that's actually looking a bit nicer. I think maybe 0.4, let's try that. Yeah, that, that's, that's looking nice. So we've got two lights in here. We've got the Sky Dome light, which is doing some sort of, think about it as interactive lighting, okay? Uh, it's kind of like, yeah, lighting from a scene. And we've got that area light kind of back up here. You can go ahead and play around. What happens if you take the subsurface scattering down? Does it make a difference? Well, you go and kind of have a, have a go for yourself. Transmission, what happens if we turn that down? Well, you won't want to turn the transmission down, actually, so leave that up for now. But again, maybe some of this is about you experimenting for yourself. So now that we've created that chrome texture, all I want to do is I want to apply it to my knife and fork because they're going to be the same texture, aren't they? So let's click the spoon. Let's go right click material attributes and it's showing us now the material is on there. And I'm going to call this chrome, at the, just at the beginning, chrome AI standard surface, okay? What I want to do now is select the fork, right click, assign existing material, and I'm going to choose my chrome material. And you'll see this now updates. So let's, uh, it's a pain when I've got the IPR on and I try and reorientate my camera, it updates. So let's click stop for now. And yeah, let's go click the knife, right click, assign existing chrome. Let's kind of come out now, something like this. Okay, now let's click the render view. And we should, there we go, we've got these nice chrome textures coming on. And when we do texture the table, the underneath will also reflect on that. And look, we've got these lovely shadows. It's really starting to look nice. So that, that's it for this video. What I'm gonna do in the next video is I'm actually going to do the glass texture. So I hope you really found that helpful. Let's look to the next video now where we'll apply the glass texture. <laughs>